Good morning. Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to Jim's 5am club. It's uh, coming on to uh, 5.30, just got off the bus. I'm in the city, I'm on George Street. And as you can see, it's uh, been raining. So I guess it's overcast, yet another overcast, wet summer's day to celebrate Sydney summer. <laughs> But uh, what can you do? It's, uh, it's how it is this year and uh, the weather is variable. Always has been, always will be. Anyway, let's go for a bit of a walk and talk. And today I'm going to uh, take you through another book summary, a wonderful book summary entitled The Road to Character by David Brooks. And what I'll do is I'll walk down towards the harbour and we'll chat away and see how it uh, how it all goes. But uh, each and every one of these books that we go through have tremendous lessons for all of us. Um, and uh, as I've said before, I gain a lot more by doing these book summaries than I think the audience who listen to these uh, logs gain so uh, if we're both gaining then that's goodness in itself so let's kick off with uh, what the author says the author kicks off his book and has a beautiful quote saying that humility is the awareness that there is a lot you don't know and that a lot of what you think you know is distorted and wrong anyway Wow, what a, what a statement that is. <laughs> That'll uh, take the wind out of uh, the bold people's uh, sail. There's a lot of people who think they know everything, especially the younger people, and they talk with such pomp, with such authority about everything, thinking that they know everything about parenting, everything about life, and yet they don't have children and they haven't lived life to find out what life is really like anyway so uh, the uh, the things which make things even trickier is social media with the advent of social media there's been uh, a lot of uh, of uh, emphasis and a shift in emphasis in society where people spend more time now in self-promotion as opposed to uh, allowing you to express express your true beautiful and kind self we've developed a uh, culture of narcissism of people who spend all their time all their energy just trying to show the world and prove the world that they are right and that everything else is insignificant and of little consequence. So uh, it puts everybody, each and every one of us, on notice and under constant pressure to perform and compete against uh, each and every other person, as opposed to cooperating and uh, working together, as previous generations would have done. So the first point from this book that the author focuses on is the me extrovert dominates our expression, and not always, and it hasn't always been so. So uh, for the young people who are growing up, there was a world that our parents and our grandparents grew up in where people were humble, people kept to themselves, and there was a lot of privacy. And the only way you get to know somebody is by getting to know them and socializing with them and spending time with them. Whereas now with social media, there is a lot of effort and time put into people 
self-promoting themselves to people that they don't even know and basically um, enhancing, embellishing and making their life appear a lot fancier and a lot more successful than what it may or may, may be. So the author uses a, an analogy, a, a metaphor, saying that uh, there are two atoms in our, in our personality. Atom one is the external atom, the one that's focused on career, success and wealth. And there's another atom called atom two, which is a more introverted, inward, inwardly facing atom who has a strong moral compass and has strong values and virtues. The virtues and values of kindness, devotion and courage. But only one atom can dominate. And usually it's the first atom that dominates, uh, the atom one. And there's been a, a shift, a shift from the atom two to the atom one over generations. So, uh, what, what causes it? A lot of it uh, has to do with a lot of the empowerment, a lot of the things that we talk about, and the push to individualism as opposed to self-restraint. So because we're so focused these days on individualism and on empowerment, that we lose focus of uh, the things that, uh, that we should be, I guess, focusing on a little bit more. Because the second point the author makes in his book is that moral values have been lost. And moral values are the things that give you and bring you real joy and satisfaction. So something to ponder. The author gives us something to ponder because our parents grew up in a different world, had different focuses, but lived a more cherished and happier life. So uh, what the author is saying is, is instead of integrity, commitment and kindness, um, we, uh, which leads to our actions, our principles, we instead have been intoxicated and we are now following our desires wherever they may lead us and however real and uh, purposeful they may be. So we've gone from, uh, from one extreme to another. So uh, instead of investing into loyalty and love, the focus now is solely on climbing the social ladder, which leads to nowhere really. Something to think about. Now, all, all, for many people, their only focus is to create a branding and a social persona, which is, uh, is all about social ladder, climbing and giving the, the impression that they are a, a lot more successful, a lot more happier, a lot more content than what we really are. So our lives tend to revolve around how we do things rather than why we do things. Very few people spend time thinking about why they do, they do th things anymore. It's all about you know, what's going to, uh, to be good on Facebook, what's going to look good on Instagram, and what's going to get the biggest bang for the buck in terms of click, clickbait. Um, and the next point that the author makes is a, is a, is a, a real um, gobsmacker because he raises a point which I haven't really thought of a lot before, but now that he says it, it becomes pretty obvious that uh, we have become um, pretty sick in the way we live our lives. Um, 
and to say that children have become tools of our self-promotion. Our children, our grandchildren have become tools of self-promotion for parents and grandparents. And the achievements that our children and grandchildren have have more to do with us looking good rather than with allowing them to grow and be rounded individuals. Pretty sad, eh? And you see, a lot, I see a lot of it in sport. Now, par parents put a lot of pressure on children. They sexualise them with their dressing. They uh, they force kids to grow up really, really quickly and become adults to think and behave like adults, rather than allowing them to um, um, enjoy their childhoods. So uh, something to think about that children have become um, um, a badge of honour for parents and grandparents as opposed to being um, um, uh, allowed to enjoy their own childhood and, uh, and all the beauties and the dreams and the wonderment of being a child. So the third and last point that comes from this book is that the author has a call to action and that call to action is for us to embrace our flaws and to toss out our foolish pride. Get over your self-centeredness is the key message from this book because the centeredness, the self-centeredness that we have will destroy us and will not allow us to grow, develop and become wonderful um, um, community members and we, to, we, learn, we need to learn as the author says to express love and compassion because the beauty in life is or is or are the struggles along the way to developing character because the author highlights and we know this and we know this we've learned this time and time again that pride blinds us to our weaknesses and it deludes us into thinking that we are the author of our lives now we need to uh, to live our lives in partnership with God and to think that we are the sole author in our happiness in our future in our achievements is a delusion according to the author so the last point in the book is the concept and the call to action that we need to balance our atoms balance atom one with atom two to try to find true fulfillment and to not get caught up to not get caught up in the syndrome called the big me there's more to life than just you. There's not more to life than just me. And the true fulfillment and happiness, and we know this, is when we work with others and we, um, um, we spend our time filling ourselves with service to others as opposed to being the servant and the slave of our self-desires. I think that's about it for today, ladies and gents, boys and girls. So thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for joining me on Jim's 5am club. Let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, and I feel absolutely great. To uh, my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable, and let's take a few points from this book, The Road to Character, and understand that uh, there is more to life than just the big me. And there is more to life than, uh, than what we're trying to uh, promote on social media. Because uh, the important lesson in life is to understand and to get, gain the awareness that there's a lot of things that we don't know and most of what we do know 
is distorted or wrong. So it's time to uh, lift our gaze, lift our sights from the mirror, from the focus on ourselves, and to start looking outwardly and to live with love, live with compassion, and help, help the world become a better place by us being a contributor and a servant to others as opposed to being the, uh, the sole servant and expect everybody else to serve us. Anyway, take care, wishing you all the best on this wet Sydney summer day. And I look forward to chatting to you again tomorrow from a different place with a different message and seeing where it leads us. Take care, live, learn and pass it on and have a great start to the work week. Yasas, we like ya from Jim on Jim's 5am club and we'll chat again.